Well, hello, ladies. Welcome back to Women's Bible Study. Um, wasn't it awesome to be together mm -hmm. last week? It was, it was awesome. It, it was, was just Cindy and I, I last week, but Nancy, it's so fun to be here with yeah. you today. We're finally getting opportunities to gather. And um, so I just hope you guys enjoyed being together and I'm glad you came back this week. Um, so some of you know, I went to Barbuda, actually Cindy went yep. to Barbuda um, several months ago and I got to experience something so cool. Um, our last night there, after spending about a week with the same group of women on our last night, they wanted to lead us in some worship um, in their style and just um, sing for us. And so they invited us on the very last song of that very last night um, to join hands with new friends that we had met. And they sang this song that kind of just changed my life. And it's been a recurring song. Actually, you heard me singing the song. It was just playing in my head. So I'm like, I just have to say it. But it's called, um, I Need You to Survive. Mm, yeah. And the words were, I need you, you need me. We're mm. all a part of God's family. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. Mm. I need you to survive. And I'm going to get emotional right now. Mm. Um, but this last season has really shown me that I need you guys, I need you guys, we need each other to survive this crazy world. Mm -hmm. Community and fellowship is so, so important. So I just want to say at the top of tonight, mm -hmm. yeah. you guys press in to your groups, press into each other, be vulnerable, let people in mm -hmm. because um, God ordained community. Yeah. He gave it to us. He gave the church to us. So I'm excited for the next 40 minutes for us to just be together here. So, sorry for starting the night off crying. <laughs> <laughs> so emotional. Hey, you guys. We wanted this to be real, right? That's right. So that's what we're doing. It's real. And I would just like to yes. say, we're doing our own videos. So this yeah. is not professional. So give us grace. <laughs> um, but anyways, last week, Cindy um, was here and she gave us an amazing lesson. And she mm -hmm. talked to us about, um, well, I don't know what you talked about. Today. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was a whole week ago. Yeah. It was <laughs> us what you told us about. <laughs> Well, we talked about the things that God was doing in our lives during the season, mm -hmm. you know, how he was working in our lives. And we had this, like you, you said, we had this time to press in and to mm -hmm. be quiet and spend time in God's word. And he did a, a wonderful work in our lives. But as we're moving forward into this next season, we're getting to look ahead to say, okay, well, what do we want to hang on to? Right. What are those things that he taught us that are important that we're going to press into, that we're going to really work hard mm -hmm at keeping because um, we talked about the the greatest tragedy is that we walk out of this season absolutely no different than we walked in. And so it was that we have to be intentional now to start planning and to take hold of um, these new um, behaviors or these mm -hmm. new habits and make them value the lifestyle changes and don't, don't let them fade away because we're coming into a more normal space. Mm -hmm. um, and so we talked about, and then we talked about it. We challenged you guys to talk about what are those things and, and to hold each other accountable. Um, and so it just kind of made us think and talk like what, um, are there any fun or new habits or anything that, that you kind of started during this COVID season <laughs> that you're going to maybe hang on to? I'm dying laughing because the first thing that came to me was like eating 12 times a day, maybe 15. <laughs> Is that something I should hang no, on no, no, to? No, 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 that, that, no. That's probably that's one you went to work on, get rid of. Right. Um, okay. No, we're, um, it's like, okay, so um, we kind of started getting into bike riding. Mm. It wasn't anything that was planned. I I've never been a fan of bike riding. That just wasn't my thing. But, you know, our um, our kids got bikes, and now our grandkids are all riding without training wheels. Oh and so God, they got so bikes. Fun. So we thought, well, we got to keep up with them. So we bought bikes and just so we could ride with them. But who knew that, mm. like, Daryl and I would love it. Yeah. And so um, what started is just something that we would, another activity to be able to do as a family. We now, Daryl and I, we load up our bikes every week and we go out somewhere and mm. we've um, found trails to start wow. riding on. And who knew that we would, like, this would be kind of one of our new things. Awesome. So, anyway, so bike That's riding good. for us. And are those like, they're mountain, little mountain bike? Yeah, they're okay. mountain bike. Like, I'm not a, <laughs> like, gung ho down the hill. I like, like, dirt roads that. You know, I gotta work out a little do you wear, bit. Like, the tight, the tight shorts. No, and I just okay. no, no, no. I do wear a helmet though. Okay, for you. I do That's wear a helmet. For you. you know, just 
Got to well, hang on to whatever sanity I do still have. <laughs> that cracks me up because one of the things that I've enjoyed about um, having all of my boys home for sheltering is I have um, two college, uh, two college boys and a senior in high school, and they have a complete weight set. Uh, in my backyard. They've taken over my backyard and they're out there with all this testosterone screaming <laughs> at each other. You got one more in you. And they're, and they're lifting weights and they're, and they're getting bigger and they want to get on the scale to see if they've, if they've gained weight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's what they're building muscle. Sure. And it has been such a joy for me mm -hmm. to um, to watch my guys enjoy each other. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's not necessarily a habit that, that I have developed, mm -hmm. but I have so enjoyed watching them. Oh, um, it. It's been really fun. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. So I obviously have some habits that I shouldn't carry on with me. <laughs> but I do know there's one that... Um, because I'm working from home and mm -hmm. so I don't have to spend time getting ready. So I've actually had a lot longer um, time to just spend with the Lord That's and awesome. quiet in the morning and just like really linger. And sometimes I just sit in mm -hmm. silence. Like I'm not praying and I'm not reading. I'm just allowing, I guess, the Holy Spirit to just mm -hmm. give me thoughts and speak to me. And it's been incredible. Mm -hmm. But as things are starting to pick up, I'm realizing that I'm kind of cutting that time short. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what you taught last week is really made me think, how do I keep this? Because it really stabilized me and I really... You know, I'm glad you said that because when you said, you know, just sitting there and letting the Lord speak to me, I have found that worship music has been so key for me during this period. Um, those quiet mornings um, when I'm alone because it has to be early at mm -hmm. my house before it gets chaotic. Um, but sometimes I just sit with my earphones on and, and sit on the floor and just kind of with my hands held up mm -hmm. and ask the Lord to speak to me, kind of to prepare my heart um, right. before I go into his word. And uh, I don't want to lose that. Yeah. I don't want to lose being very intentional mm -hmm. about um, inviting the Lord in through music because mm -hmm. it's, it's just been so Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So beautiful for me. Yeah, that's so. that's awesome. I yes. love that. Yeah. Well, um, I know we could talk about a lot of other things, but you guys, I'm sure there have been habits that you've put into place during COVID that you want to safeguard to not let mm -hmm. those be the first things that go to the wayside once life kind of gets back into a normal rhythm. So why don't you guys just take about 10 minutes in your groups and go ahead and share with each other what, what are those things you've put in practice and into place that you want to continue on?
All right, well, I'm sure you guys um, shared some incredible opportunities um, to press into this season, um, but I'm excited because we're gonna continue on with our teachings on living beyond the fairy tale. And um, we've had some really intimate conversations just preparing for this study. And um, I know for you, um, Nancy, that this hasn't been quite a fairy tale experience. <laughs> You've expressed to me some of your um, struggle feelings of being stuck. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is, is that you've learned some resilience yeah. in this season. And so Nancy is here tonight to just kind of share with us her journey and um, those steps to becoming resilient. So I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Christy. I really am excited to kind of share what the Lord has been teaching me um, during this season. But before I jump into the lesson, I just have to share with you guys what I call the biggest bonus of sheltering at home. Um, there were six of us that sheltered um, at home in my house, three college students and um, a high schooler, my husband and I. Now, you, you guys know that I have all boys, mm -hmm. okay? So when my niece, who attends college in Southern California, needed a place to shelter, I'm like, come on up, I want some estrogen. <laughs> and, and so uh, my niece came and joined us for about seven weeks. And during that period of time, oh my word, we had so much fun together. Okay, first thing that we did was subscribe to Disney Plus. Now, remember, I'm a mom of many boys, and so as my boys were growing up, I watched Disney movies like Cars and Toys and that sort of thing. But when my niece came, I got to watch all the Disney movies that I had never seen. So things like um, Brave and um, Princess and the Frog, Tangled, Frozen, uh, there were just so many. It was okay. I'm All not the ones that have princesses right, in them, yeah. right? And I'm not a gr real girly girl, but it was so fun to have a teenager with me. Um, it's just so different raising raising boys. Mm -hmm. And so, um, as knowing that we were talking about living beyond the fairy tale, um, for me, I really resonated with uh, Frozen, and um, so I want to spend some time as as I'm um, telling you what the Lord has taught me uh, and talking about Frozen. Um, and the character that I most related to was Anna for a lot of reasons. Um, Anna was um, the youngest um, girl and I'm the baby in a family of girls. Um, when she was a child, you know, Anna felt, I think, rejected and alone, um, confused for sure. And as an adult, um, Anna was a little chatty, sometimes said things that she didn't mean to say. Not that I ever do that, but I, I can relate to her a little bit uh, in that. But mostly I loved Anna because she was totally resilient. Mm -hmm. um, but the Frozen movies were such a gift to me, uh, primarily because the true love story in the Frozen films was um, sisterhood. Mm -hmm. And I just absolutely loved the way that the Lord used um, that movie in my life. Um, so biggest bonus of COVID was sheltering with, with a female at my house. Super, super fun. Um, so the truth is, as Christy mentioned, that it's it's not uncommon during uh, times of difficulty to experience some, some spiritual struggles. Um, and for me, I'm coming out of a really tough season. Uh, I want to talk today about um, just for those of us that have found ourselves in a, in a painful time, um, I want you to know that you're not alone if that's you. Uh, God has promised us an abundant life, um, and he, he calls us his daughters. And it, this whole idea of a fairy tale, while it's fun, and I really enjoyed being a part of it, it's it's not what God has planned for us. Um, before COVID even hit, I was in a time of already some really difficult things going on. I have a terminally ill mother-in-law. Um, um, uh, my husband is getting ready for uh, back surgery. Um, I lost a really close relationship um, during COVID, mm -hmm. um, not to mention financial burden, which I know a lot of you can relate to. A lot of us have, have been hit um, by finances. Um, but I did a lot of things wrong early on in COVID. And I just feel like it's important for us to acknowledge that not all of us breezed through COVID. Um, I am prone to depression and anxiety anyway. And because I came into this period already with some tough things going on, I really kind of took a dive into um, 
being stuck. Mm -hmm. And now I've been walking with Jesus for a long time. And part of me thinks I should know better. Nancy, you, you know what God's word says. There's no reason. Um, but during this period of being stuck, you know, what I realized is that I almost was worshiping my pain. Now, I, I wasn't doing this on purpose. Uh, I wasn't even aware of it for a while. Um, but I was listening. I, I was listening to a podcast um, actually with Kay Warren and and her guest made this comment and it really stood out to me. Uh, it says a normal spiritual struggle can become a long term disconnect when you don't press into it. Mm. Let me say that again. I just think it's so important. Normal spiritual struggle, which is something we all have, we all struggle at times spiritually, it can become a long-term disconnect when we don't press into it. And so for me, I found myself just in this place of needing to start with just acknowledging what seemed so obvious to the people I was living with, that I was in a horrible place, and I needed to acknowledge that I was kind of choosing to be in a bad place. So for me, uh, it started by just acknowledging mm -hmm. that I was kind of worshiping my pain. And I know it sounds horrible, but when I got honest with myself and got honest with the Lord, that's, that's what started coming up. And so I know that the Psalms are filled with yeah. laments. And I'm so grateful that we have people in the Bible that are just raw and honest with God and just put it out there. And so um, one of the Psalms that, that really spoke to me during this period was Psalm 5. I'm going to read it to you out of the New Living Translation. It reads, Oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for I will never pray to anyone but you. Listen to, the vo to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning, I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. Yeah. Now, this verse can be so full of hope mm -hmm. because we lay our request before him. But here was the problem with being stuck is I was waiting not expectantly. Mm. I was waiting apathetically. Mm. Yeah. I was so off in the way that I was relating to God. I was just absolutely in a hard place. I stuck with this apathy until you guys, God used a Disney song. No joke. <laughs> he used a Disney song. So in the Bible, we see God do some crazy things, right? He uses a jawbone. He uses yeah. a donkey to talk to somebody. So I don't think that Disney wrote some song um, as a spiritual awakening. But my point is, is that God <laughs> can absolutely use totally. anything to get us unstuck, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Totally yep. relate to that. Um, it's from Frozen 2, and it's when Anna is... Um, stuck in a cave and um, she's desperate. She's alone and she is scared and she feels totally hopeless. Like Anna, during this time, I felt a lot of hopelessness. Um, some of the lyrics that she sang resonated so much with me. I've seen dark before, but not like this. This is cold, this is empty, this is numb. Hello, darkness, I'm ready to succumb. There was a moment during shelter at home that I felt so utterly hopeless that I actually believed the lie that suicide might be a good option for me. Mm -hmm. And it was because he just wanted the pain to stop. Mm -hmm. And I, I journaled over and over again, just asking the Lord, to make the pain stop. Back to Anna's song. Anna says, but a tiny voice whispers in my mind, you are lost, hope is gone. I'm thinking, no way. Hope's not gone for me. Hmm. No, my hope is in Christ. But Anna says, and I say, you must go on and do the next right thing. Hmm. And this is where the miracle happened for me. And, and you know, and, and we joke about God using anything, but I'm telling you, when in this Disney song, she says, take a step, step again. It's all that I can do, the next right thing. This was so true for me in this moment in my life. I won't look too far ahead. It's too much for me to take, but break it down to this next breath, this next step. This next choice is one that I can make. So I'll walk through this night, stumbling blindly toward the light, and I'll do the next right thing. 
So I went to bed that night um, feeling some hope for the first time because all of a sudden things had shifted for me and I thought, I don't have to fix everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't, I just need to do the next right thing. And you know how we gather on church and um, on Sundays and, and people type on the side sometimes? Oh, yeah. Um, somebody made a comment recently that stood out to me during the same period. Uh, I don't even know who made the comment, but it basically was this, don't make a permanent decision mm -hmm. based on temporary feelings. And I went to bed that night thinking about that statement mm -hmm. and about doing just the next right thing. For me, the next right thing was I got up the next morning, I got out a brand new journal because I didn't want my old one, and I made a gratitude list. And that was the beginning of the next right thing for me. So I wrote the next, the next step for me was just writing a gratitude list. And ladies, we have so much to be mm -hmm. grateful for, no matter what the depth of your pain, mm -hmm. no matter what you're going through, mm -hmm. taking pen to paper um, was really helpful. Mm -hmm. The next thing that I did was I began reaching out to trusted friends. Now, at first, I, um, I couldn't call. Like sometimes I feel like I get, I'm just so high maintenance. I'm always asking for prayer. Um, you know, I, I, people hear the same struggle over and over. So I, I couldn't even call at first, uh, but I, I was able to text. And so I text some people and um, had them start praying for me because the reality is when I get really down, I tend to isolate. Um, do, you, do you guys relate to that? Mm -hmm. Do you ever isolate? Totally. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I know I'm not alone in yeah. that. Um, but I also know that we're not just like it was said earlier, we're not meant to live life alone. We are meant to live life in community. Mm -hmm. And so in this painful time and losing a, a, a childhood friendship of mind that I'm still praying it is not permanent, it caused some deep, incredible pain that I was talking to a, a good friend about. And I was able to do that. And I just want to read you some w words she sent back to me, uh, knowing the depth of my pain um, in that moment. She said, I know you're resting and I pray that you can really rest. I'll be praying for you and for her. I see the enemy all over this. Nancy, you are amazing and kind, godly woman. Do not let the enemy trick you into believing lies about yourself. There are two things in this text that I want to point out. I needed to be reminded that I do belong to God. And I needed to be reminded that the enemy was lying to me. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when we get caught up in depression and we choose to isolate like I was, um, we just need to be reminded of the truth. Yeah. And this began to transform me more and more. So I, I, I reached out to friends. I, I lamented. Um, and then I remembered the truth that I have the resilience of Christ in me. And as I, I continued in this journey, I realized, oh my gosh, I seriously need to repent. I have really not been obviously, it's not like I felt like my sins were so obvious and I was, I was acting out and doing all these horrible things. But I knew that the Lord was saying, Nancy, things are not right. And, and so in Psalm, Psalm um, 19, I want to, I want to read this to you. Um, let's see here. How can I know all this sin lurking in my heart? That's what I was asking the Lord. Lord, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep me from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. Do you have ladies have do you do you have go-to scriptures for repentance? Like what do you go to? Well, mine's actually very similar to yours. Um mine um well I have several, but one of that I just thought of was uh, Psalm 51 because I, I write notes in my Bible. Yeah, so I have little yeah. notes to myself. I'm like if anyone saw my Bible, I think I was crazy, but um after, it's Psalm 51 after David was in a oh, yeah. in Bathsheba. relationship yeah. mm -hmm, with Bathsheba. And he just says, ask God to be gracious with me according to your abundant compassion. Mm. Wash out my rebellion. Wash me from my sin. And then he says, for I am conscious of my rebellion. And mm. I wrote next to that, am I? With a big question mark because my, my biggest struggle is I'm often not conscious of my sin. Mm. I just yeah. get going on with my life. And if I'm not doing big 
big sins. Right. Um, I just am not um, aware of them. And so then there's a scripture, Psalm 139, and this is mm -hmm. what I pray a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, it says, search me, God, know my heart, mm -hmm. yeah. test me, know my concerns, see if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. It's like, I need to yes. ask God, show me, because I'm oblivious on right. my own. Of course, yeah. I have the Holy Spirit convicting me, but I, I often just can push that aside. Yeah, so, um, and you and I talked earlier about some of our um, our go to, and I love what you had to say. Yeah, mine is in actually in this. I I'm like you guys. I've had lots. <laughs> it kind of depends on well which season. Yeah, yes. Right now in this season, though, I'm in Acts. Um, it's in Acts mm -hmm. chapter three, and it's verse nineteen and twenty. And this is mm -hmm. what it says. And I'm reading it in the Living Translation. It says. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from mm. the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And I love this because it's a twofold step. It's first of the repenting yes. and um, the repenting of my sin and, and washing away. And it says you're going to be forgiven. They're going to be wiped away. And you know, Jesus, God says it's as far as the east yes. is from the best. You know, yes. they're, they're gone. Um, but then the second part, it says, so that refreshment will come in the presence of the Lord. Right. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's in the season that I am, it's sin becomes in comes in between me and God. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's that distance and that tension in the relationship, but that refreshment of the presence brings mm -hmm. back that closeness because it's the distance that is almost my undoing mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. But to be back in that close, intimate fellowship and that's what the repentance does yeah, yeah actually so um at the end of psalm 51 that i started yeah. with it says restore to me the joy mm -hmm. of your salvation it. and it's when we do that 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 yeah, joy comes does. back and we wonder sometimes why are we joyless in our yes. life maybe this is yes that's the key well and you know keys. i think it's 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 totally i think we're all saying the same thing mm -hmm. we're at, we must ask the lord to reveal sure. our mm -hmm. sin because um especially you know in, in my situation as I asked the Lord to, to speak into these dark places in me, um, you know, feelings are not a sin. Right. And it, it's what we do with our feelings where we get into trouble. Yeah. And so what the Lord was revealing to me was, is that my sins were, you know, apathy and fear and, and not trusting him and, mm. and not believing the truth of what he says. Mm -hmm. And so, um, interestingly, both of you referred to a scripture that kind of had um, a repentance and then it had a turn. Mm -hmm. um, Psalm 19 does this exact thing. Um, the very next scripture, Psalm 19, uh, verse 14 says, may the words of my mouth and the mouth and the thoughts of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Mm -hmm. And those words became... A mantra for me for several days I, I'm still coming out of this I'm letting people into my life and into my struggle um, I'm being honest with myself and with friends and with God and and for days I just kept meditating over and over again mm -hmm. on that may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you my Lord, my rock, and my Redeemer. And you know, the truth is that the more I spoke scripture aloud, the more um, my resilience increased. And, and it just made me think of like a red ball. Do you remember the red balls when we were little on the playgrounds uh, that we, we'd have at school? And, and I remember we would, we would, you know, we'd bounce them and we'd try to get them bounce high enough to go on the roof. That yeah. was always okay. our plan. Well, you know, resilience can, you know, it's that elasticity of, of the, the harder you push, the higher it goes. And, and this is what began to happen for me as my trans, as my thoughts began to transform is the more I got into God's word, the more I recited scripture, mm -hmm. the more I pressed into this place that I was trying to ignore, um, the more resilient I got. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nothing that I was doing. I was just tapping into the power of the Holy Spirit that was there all along. Mm -hmm. And so it's that spiritual resilience, um, that transforming my thinking. Um, and I, I wonder about that. I, I have some thoughts on transforming uh, my thinking, but I'm curious, what do you guys do when you find yourself thinking negative thoughts or um, feeling stuck. Do you have a way that you work to transform your life? I mean, you had a funny one, I thought. I want, you gotta tell these well, guys about how you transform your thoughts. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very, um, 
practical, I'm very visual, um, and I'm very action. Like I like to put hands and feet to things. And so um, it's the idea is like, I have this negative thought or this wrong thought or whatever, right. and I take it out and I, I can visualize it like a banner in front of me. And then I kind of get my dukes up like this, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, and I, I give it a punch and I, I physically do that. I do this when I'm, if I'm running or walking and I'll actually give it a punch. And then I visualize it like a cartoon, you know, when they kick something and they just watch it go. Oh so I watch this banner go and then I take that new thought or that mm. true thought or that right thought or word or whatever it right. might be. And then I visualize that as the banner and I, I can just visualize myself taking that and now putting that in my mind. Mm. And most often I do not have to repeat those steps because immediately when that wrong thought or, or negative thinking is coming, I can immediately jump to, well, no, I got rid of that. What's okay. the truth? Oh, but on that. seasons that are hard, you know, I do have to write it down. Um, you know, when it's maybe all day or days right. I have to work at it, or right. even the best thing I do is I put it on a little card and even put it in my pocket right. because all I need to do then is tuck my hand into my pocket and touch that card. Mm, I love that. Just touching it brings that mm. um, remembrance. Yeah. That's awesome. And um, over time, mm. it it does change. I, I could just picture you walking down the street I, and you're, you're, you're <laughs> exercising. All of a sudden, you're like, boom, 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 boom. I do. And I have to tell you, if, it, if people are around, I have done it because it, I need that physical. But, you know, I'll have my arms down. I'll just kind of... <laughs> You know, and just, it's like, you got it. You got it. You got it. Are they like, oh, she want to fight me or what? Yeah, you might. <laughs> but now you guys all know my secret. So if you see me kind of do this kind of thing, you're kind of like, oh, Cindy's doing some spiritual battle. I right love now. it. I love oh, it. Right. What about you, Christy? What do you do? Actually, I'm like, people might think we're crazy I, because. <laughs> we're too easy to pod, yeah. Christy. <laughs> the, I um, actually have to talk to myself. Okay. And I mean, like. Yep. I mean, it's kind right. of the same self talk. Yeah, it's just self talk, yeah. but I have to do it out loud because I get trapped in right. my negative thinking, and the they're all lies. Yeah, sure. And so I just talk it out loud, and when I can bring it to the light, yeah. hear it, and then I'm like, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Or yeah. or I'll get on the phone and tell my sister, and she's like, you're crazy. <laughs> and I love about that though. Is yeah, it's what we were talking about right. earlier. We need each other. Mm -hmm. Right, dude. When we keep things in our head, they get so much bigger than they need to. Um, and I know Pastor Steve even uh, was talking about um, this concept in in a recent message. How our feelings, what we're feeling inside, um, affect our thinking, mm -hmm. and and then our thoughts affect our actions. And so, if if I am feeling like I was feeling hopeless. Um, if I did not chain, take that feeling, uh, and acknowledge the feeling, because again, I think it's really important to acknowledge that your feelings are valid and real. And I don't ever want anyone to think like it's a, it, I can't ever feel depressed or I can't ever feel, um, anxious or hopeless. Um, those thoughts are real, they're valid, but they don't always tell you the truth. Okay. And so a feel our feelings lead to thinking and our thinkings to action. And yeah. Christy, I am right with you, girl, because my the way I transform my thinking is through self-talk. I have a mentor that says, Nancy, you need to start preaching to yourself. Yeah. And and so I do. And um and in my Bible all over the place, I keep I write my name, you know, and I say things like and this is what I was doing at this this phase um, that I was, you know, building resilience and coming mm -hmm. out of this stuckness. I would say things like, Nancy, God loves you with an everlasting love. Mm -hmm. Nancy, nothing is too big for God. Even though you're feeling this way, you think life is really hard. You can do hard things. Mm -hmm. We've all done hard things. You know, I, I was believing the lie and feeling, truly feeling like my depression would never lift. Mm. But I've struggled with depression for decades and it always lifts. Mm -hmm. And I have people in my life that remind me of that. Yeah. Because the truth is, the enemy doesn't want me to believe yeah. that. Right. And he wants to put thoughts in my mind that make me forget the truth that God is good and that his promises are for me. Mm, yeah. So my resilience increased because of God's truth, because I was preaching to myself, because I was reaching out to mm -hmm. friends, uh, because I was just getting honest. And, you know, a, a lot of what I'm sharing today is may not be new to you. Um, and it might even seem very simple, but 
don't mistake simple for easy because uh, true. the simple mm -hmm. concepts of living a life surrendered to Christ are not always easy. Mm -hmm. And this whole idea of um, looking at my life in my pain, or let me say it this way, looking at my life apart from my pain, I, I had just gotten so caught up in pain. I'm an extroverted woman caught at home with a bunch of men, okay? <laughs> and I, uh, I'm not saying that caused cause things. But um, what I mean is that I needed to look at my life apart from my pain. Yeah. And and I, and I that's what happened as um, I started to regain hope. Uh, I, I changed my perspective. James, uh, James 4, uh, 7 through 10 is, is just one of my all-time favorites. I want to see if I've got it marked here in um, the New Living Translation. It's, it's a familiar verse. Um, but it's not one I always remember. Mm -hmm. and, and that sounds a little contradictory, um, but sometimes I just feel like like the devil wants to make me forget this. Um, because again, another turning point for me was this in, in James 4, 7 through 10. So humble yourself before God, Nancy. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw close to God and God will draw close to you. How much more do I need to do than resist the devil and draw near to God? And I was doing all those things by reaching out, by taking thoughts captive, um, by changing my internal, my internal monologue. And I'll tell you, I talk to my kids about this a lot. You know, like, I don't think that we should have internal monologues. I think we should have internal dialogues because the Holy Spirit lives within us. Right. And he is there to comfort us, to counsel us, mm -hmm. to remind us of things that we have studied in God's word. And so sometimes I will just I will just find myself before the Lord and I will I will be saying, Lord, remind me of your truth. Bring to mind scripture that is deep within my heart. And and when I do that, Every single time he does. he does. And a lot of times it is this scripture, draw near to God mm -hmm. and he will draw near to you. Yeah. Resist the devil and he will flee from yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So transforming my thoughts, my resilience began, uh, just continued to grow. And then I would say the final, the final thing that I want to say just, just in wrapping up here is... Um, is, is just acknowledging that I was stuck was the beginning of change for me. Um, and I did that by acknowledging to friends and by lamenting um, with scripture that was writ written already. Uh, I did that by repenting aloud uh, with friends, by taking a risk. Ladies, please do not resist reaching out to your friends mm -hmm. because when we do that, I had a mentor tell me one time, Nancy, when you request prayer or when you when you refuse to request prayer, because I do that sometimes, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm worried about what people think and I'm insecure mm -hmm. and I feel high maintenance, like I said. And But when someone said to me, Nancy, you're robbing me of the blessing of being a part mm -hmm. of, of your journey. Yeah, right. and, and how often do you pray for me? And I thought, why do I do this? It's so silly. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to resist reaching out to the body of Christ. We are sisters in the Lord, and God has called us to do life together. And so I want I want to um, finish by, by just reading out of um, Colossians the, um, the wonderful scripture about the abundant life yeah. that is in Colossians 3, 1 and 4. And I want to read this out of the message uh, paraphrase. I just really feel like it captures the abundant life that God calls us to live, living way beyond the fairy tale, to the abundant life in Christ. It reads, if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what's going on around you. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. His is your life. Can we just pray together? Yes. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just thank you for your love and your faithfulness. And we thank you for the gift of girlfriends. 
We thank you for your eternal word that never comes back void. Lord, I thank you that um, you can use things like songs and fairy tales and estrogen <laughs> to pull me out of a dark place and to remind me of the truth that I belong to you, that each one of us, um, Lord, I just pray right now by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would be stirring in the hearts and the minds of the women who are hearing my voice to bring them to a place mm -hmm. where they'd be willing to be vulnerable in their groups tonight, right where they're at. If they've experienced pain, Lord, we know that you can meet them right where they're at. Um, and Lord, we just thank you for the gift of your word and the power of your presence in our lives. In the name, power, and authority of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Oh. Thank you, Nancy. Gosh, that was awesome. You guys, Nancy gave us some great um, instruction. She gave us some very practical instruction. Um, I'm going to highlight just the, the five steps that she said, because you may not have caught all of them and we want to make sure you get them. And she says, the first one is to begin lamenting and then to reach out to friends and repent and, uh, transform our thinking and then change our perspective. Um, such great, um, steps, like I said, practical. Um, and I especially love what you said about taking the risk and reaching out to the friends. Yes. And you guys, right now, we're, you might be sitting together with a group of friends, or you might be on a Zoom call with a group of friends. These are, these are people who love you, and you mm. love them. Mm -hmm. What a great place to step into one of these steps now and, and take that risk and reach out and say, this is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm struggling with. Can yeah. you help me? Can you speak life into me? Can you mm -hmm. pray for me? Can you support me? Or mm -hmm. wherever it might be. Um, I just want to add one thing no, to go. that, Cindy, because sometimes when, when we're in groups like this and we hear a message that, you know, maybe is a little, little heavier, um, you know, I realize that uh, gratefully my story is not everyone's story. And, and I'm so grateful that of the, of this four week series, you're going to hear so many different perspectives. You may be in a group right now and everybody around you is in a good place. And if, and if that's the case, then praise God. Yeah. You know, we don't have, not everybody and not every group is going to have somebody that is struggling. But what I want to challenge you to do in these, in these next moments, um, is to just kind of look around your group and notice if somebody's extra quiet. And if they are, they may not have enough guts to reach out, but you can press in a little bit mm -hmm. and show your love and your care. Mm -hmm. So we hope that you'll do that mm -hmm. in your time. Okay. Great words of wisdom, great words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So we wanna give you this time now for your, your groups, for you guys mm -hmm. to talk together. Um, and we will um, gather back again next week yep. at the same place. So thanks again, ladies. Thanks, we'll Nancy. see you next That's week. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Love being with you. Mm -hmm.